Stefano Del Col, Head of Mission and Force Commander. What we called, um, or what the international community calls, the non-traditional donors, uh, because this is uh, no longer... Uh, some of the terminology that we use, which uh, is expected to help us understand issues more clearly, but they actually end up covering up uh, most of the issues uh, on the ground. The term MENA, for example, Middle East and North Africa, has always seemed to be very problematic to me because it tends to be stereotyped. Middle East and North Africa is a vast region. There are many different communities there. You have uh, Muslims, Christians, Jews living together for support in that vast region. You have Turks, Arabs, Persians, Kurds, and many, many other Africans and, and others in North Africa. Uh, it's actually much more plural, multicultural than it is credit for. When you look at countries like Egypt, Lebanon, Jordan, and uh, Turkey and other places where Muslims and non-Muslims actually live in peace, uh, much better circumstances, I have to say, than many other uh, has become very dysfunctional, mostly thanks to uh, the stubborn uh, position uh, of the Assad regime and its backers, mainly Russia and Iran. But we are trying to engage both Russia and Iran to put pressure on the Syrian regime to move forward with the constitutional uh, committee, uh, with the Astana process, uh, and all hopefully to be brought under the Geneva, uh, Geneva process. We are helping the situation on the ground more than any other country. As you know, we host uh, about 4 million refugees, Syrian refugees uh, in Turkey for the last 5-6 years with very little international help. Uh, and our president has said, look, uh, we don't care whether others come to help or not, we will continue to help these people because they're, they're not coming to Turkey for picnic. They're running away from a brutal war, from the, the, the chemical weapons and the barrel bombs of the Assad regime. Uh, and uh, we uh, will continue to support the Syrian people, but we also have reached a point in our capacity to take any more Syrian refugees. That fact needs to be acknowledged, uh, I think, by others in the international community, the EU, the United States, the UN, uh, and other uh, international bodies have to take, uh, again, ownership and leadership to deal with this. And this is only one aspect of the issue, that's the refugees. I refer to the March 18th statement. We were expecting, and I spent so much time on this, you know, talking to my EU colleagues over the last two years, to have an update on the migration deal so that it will be more effective, it will really mean something on the ground for the Syrian people. The money that was allocated by the EU, 3 plus 3 billion euros, again, if you, if you consider the, 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 the enormous size of this problem, 6 billion euros is nothing. Uh, it's practically nothing for millions of refugees for their needs, educational needs, medical needs, and, and everything else. Uh, and that money is still, okay, we said yes to it five years or six years ago. Uh, only half of it has been spent on the Syrian refugees because of EU bureaucracy. Every time we raise this issue, we say, well, what can we do? This is EU bureaucracy. Syrian people, refugees, don't wait for the EU bureaucracy to speed up. Uh, I mean, their needs are urgent daily, every single day. But I think in this room, though, is that PYD, YPG is PKK in Syria. And PKK is listed as a terrorist organization on EU's list of terrorist organizations U.S. list of terrorist organizations and elsewhere. They know this very well. They support PKK in Syria. And then the question is, how can you fight a terrorist organization with another by supporting by another terrorist organization? They say, well, they have been the most effective force against us. That is true, and with only uh, uh, the provision that we have to remember that that's thanks to your support. If you had supported put all this military and financial support behind any other group in Syria. You have non-PKK Kurds, you have Arabs, you have Sunnis, you have non-Sunnis in Syria, you have many others uh, who want to see a democratic, pluralistic Syria. You have not supported this people. Asıl sorun birçok batılı ülke, Orta Doğu'daki, Kuzey Afrika'daki ya da Afganistan'daki sorunlara, Libya'daki, Suriye'deki meselelere iki ya da genellikle üç mesele zaviyesinden bakmayı adet edindiler. Bunlardan birincisi terörizm, terörle mücadele, ikincisi göç, üçüncüsü de e, e, doğal gaz ve petrolün olduğu yerlerde enerji meselesi. Bu üç konuya indirgediğiniz zaman, işte Orta Doğu'dur, Kuzey Afrika'dır, genel olarak Akdeniz bölgesidir, yahut Afganistan veya başka bölgeleri, Libya'yı, e, büyük bir hata yaparsınız. E, çünkü bakışınız çok araçsal hale gelir. E, öncelikle bu bakış açısından kurtulması daha geniş, daha doğru bir e, perspektiften meselelerin ele alınması 
gerekiyor. Biz e, bu bölgede Akdeniz'de olsun, Doğu Akdeniz'de olsun e, her zaman e, barış, istikrar ve e, adil paylaşımın esas olduğu bir siyasi bölgesel jeopolitik modeli savunduk. Cumhurbaşkanımız bu çerçevede e, bütün Akdeniz ülkeleriyle iyi ilişkiler içerisinde olmak için yoğun bir diplomasi çabası sarf ediyor. Son e, dönemde de bildiğiniz gibi bir yıldan fazla oldu aslında. Bir Doğu Akdeniz konferansı düzenlenmesi çağrısında bulundu. Hem Avrupa Birliği'ne hem diğer ülkelere. Yani böylece özellikle Akdeniz'deki enerji kaynaklarını birlikte nasıl değerlendirebiliriz? Libya meselesini birlikte işbirliği içerisinde nasıl ele alabiliriz? Suriye meselesini savaşı nasıl sonlandırıp siyasi süreci nasıl ilerletebiliriz diye. E, bu konulardaki çalışmalarımız ve çabalarımız e, devam ediyor. E, bundan sonra da Türkiye olarak biz bu alanlarda barış, istikrar ve refahın e, adil paylaşımı için e, yoğun çalışmalarımızı devam ettireceğiz.